Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. Quinn, Weena, de Blasio, Thompson, and Lou. Katsimatidis, Loda, Bloomberg, too. Teacher evaluations, environmental racism, stop and frisk, and scandals galore. Who could ask for anything more? Here to talk New York City politics, maybe with forays into the twilight zone that is Albany, are two distinguished members of the Fourth Estate, Errol Lewis and Ozzie Piber. Errol Lewis is the political anchor at New York One News and host of Inside City Hall slash Road to City Hall. Prior to joining New York One in November 2010, Errol was a Daily News columnist and served on the paper's editorial board. In addition to his New York One work, Errol is a frequent guest on other local television and radio programs and has been a contributor at CNN since 2008. He is also a colleague of mine at the Graduate School of Journalism at CUNY. Ozzie Piper is the ubiquitous reporter for the Capitol and the premier blogger in New York City and one of its most respected practitioners. He has covered politics for the New York Observer, WNYC, and the New York Sun, and the New York Press, and he also has spoken before our classes at CUNY to much acclaim. Okay, folks, the headline, bloodshed in Brooklyn. People dead, multiple shootings. What's the story? Well, this has been going on for quite a while in some neighborhoods. In uh, Brooklyn North, which is about 10 precincts, um, mm -hmm. sort of uh, the arc that goes from East New York up around through Bushwick, uh, Bed-Stuy, Crown Heights, um, North Crown Heights, at least. Um, it's, 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 been, it's been tough throughout. I mean, this was, it was the one area that you could always go back to and say there's a counter trend to a lot of the happy talk coming mm. out of one police plaza. They've okay. had, a, they've had a, basically a standing army out in the 73rd Precinct for years. You know, that's where all of the stop and frisk yep. activity was going yep. on. Um, so they were only barely containing this. And so when the weather gets hot, and people uh, come out for block parties, and people get on each other's nerves, and the drug trade has really never gone away. Okay. Um, this stuff is going to happen, and I don't want to be blasé about it, but this is this is not a story that is news in the sense that hey, this wasn't supposed to happen. This has been going on. So know? this is systemic. This is not an anomaly. It is not an anomaly. It is probably, I think, um, you know, I mean, for any. 48-hour period, yeah, maybe there was a little bit of a spike. But if you look at the numbers, and it's all online, the CompStat numbers, um, they've been slowly going down like in the rest of the city, but not nearly as quickly as in the rest of the city. And if you compare the numbers back to the first year that Bloomberg took office or back to 1998, mm -hmm. for example, it's actually not that much of an improvement. So, you know, there are people who have been trying some fairly, you know, organized, energetic, dramatic interventions in Crown Heights and Bed-Stuy, in, uh, in East New York to try and get their, their arms around this. But, you know, it's, it's, it's still here. Now, in the rest of the city, you know, when it, when in s some places, you've seen some, uh, s some street violence, and it, and it is an anomaly. And they're like, gee, where's, where's right. that coming from? Right. But Central Brooklyn? Central Brooklyn has always been a problem okay. throughout this mayoralty. Ozzy, more political today. Uh, endorsements of Billy Thompson, by whom, why, impact? So there's a few announcements that they're announcing today. Uh, Congressman Charlie Rangel and former Mayor David Dinkins. They're uh, both based in Harlem, prominent African Americans, and they're helping to solidify Bill Thompson's base. Now, this is happening at a time where you see Anthony Weiner's poll numbers rising. Weiner, the former congressman who resigned over a sexting scandal where he sent lewd images to various women, including one person who was around 17 years old. Uh, and then, and then, serially lied about it right. as well. Right, lied about it to cover it up, and then has done a mea culpa, and then has basically returned to the campaign trail as the Anthony Weiner that we all knew before, which is a very pugnacious, rambunctious kind of uh, outspoken character. And what what's happening in the polls is that with his very high name recognition, the other candidates who really haven't gotten the attention of most of the voters are now realizing that they can no longer ignore him and that they're going to have to do something a little bit more aggressive in terms of solidifying their base as they're heading into the real uh, you know, dog days of summer, heading right into the September primary. Mm -hmm. 
So Bill, so Bill Thompson, who's doing a five borough tour today, which is something that uh, Christine Quinn has done, which is something that John Liu does almost every single day, and something that Bill de Blasio uh, has, has tried to do, uh, he's, going, he's going around sort of replicating what we've seen Anthony Weiner do, which is go somewhere, have a, have like a media circus follow him, even take the train and inviting reporters <laughs> with him. So Bill Thompson, he's stopping uptown, getting this uh, major endorsement. And one of the responses to that is Christine Quinn is announcing an endorsement of another Harlem uh, politician, city council member Inez Quinn. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Inez Diggins. Um, little s slip of the tongue there. So uh, she's from Harlem, and it's sort of giving uh, Christine Quinn a cover to say, not everyone uptown is supporting Bill Thompson. I have some support up there also. Okay, Thompson, is Thompson a different candidate in 2009? Not that, I mean, they, they, you almost have to be a better candidate than he was in 2009. Is he a different candidate? How so? And is it enough? I think, I think he is a different candidate. I, you know, he seems to have learned some lessons, for one thing. You know, so things like um, moving, moving early. You know, he was, he was uh, moving at a much different kind of a pace before. On the other hand, it was essentially just him challenging a sitting mayor. This is a whole different uh, right. sort of a playing field. Um, uh, I think he, well, he has a different team, you know, his campaign manager, um, who's a, 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 a great guy, um, Eduardo Castell, um, is not his campaign manager this time. He's part of the team, but he's not in that role. So he's kind of... Uh, different campaign, yeah, different, different candidate. Different strategy, different theory, you know, um, a different path to victory, frankly. You know, and it's a whole different, a whole different ball. Game. Smart money saying what about Thompson? I mean, looks like with Wiener in the race, we're headed to a runoff. Give me, guaranteed, well, give, me, give, me, give me a little I think, smart I think, money I think here. it's fair to say the consensus was all along that um, uh, he was helped by Wiener getting into the race right. more than any other candidate. Because he's got a base. Because he's got a Presumably base. Presumably an African-American base. Right. I mean, look, it, this, is, this is one of the central questions of this whole race. Go. Is that, you know, um, is this going to be the race where for the very first time in New York City history... No. ...ethnicity doesn't play <laughs> no. a role? Well, no. You know, Go ahead. But, but right. you know, various people's path to victory depends on it being altered a little bit because if it's if it's a straight ethnic if it's straight ethnic politics with no latino in the race then you know if the asian votes go to lou and the white the, the jewish votes go to to to, to Weiner and the irish votes go to quinn and the black votes go to thompson you know it's it's going to play out in a fairly straightforward way now everybody's pushing against that type sure including right. including bill de blasio right, right? Every, everybody is is going to try and assemble some kind of a coalition right picking up a little here and a little there it's never going to be monolithically tribal that's right and it, and it gets it gets very interesting there was that the piece about uh, bill thompson's long-standing ties to the the orthodox jewish right. community, mm. which is yes which is a, you know a bit of a brooklyn curiosity but real but, it, but it's real it's it, real it, apparently right. it's real now how does what, is, what does that mean for wiener we shall see talk yeah. about wiener i mean wiener has gotten huge press right you guys are making Anthony Weiner. How oh. popular is Anthony Weiner <laughs> out there, and how much of it is a media phenomenon? Uh, he, he is the closest thing to a celebrity candidate that this race has seen. I mean, Christine Quinn had started this campaign in that type of position. She was the candidate that people couldn't get enough of. They, they've rolled out uh, parts of her biography. You know, uh, it was previewed first in an interview with the New York Times. The New York Times later got and uh, their hands on the book and uh, excerpted it. She's been featured pretty prominently in that newspaper. I mean, on the, on, on the cover of National Magazine. Well, well, she got on the cover of New York Magazine the weekend that Bill de Blasio announced the, his campaign kickoff, which, you know, s sort of squashed that announcement. And the following day, the New York Post put the same exact picture on, on the front page of their paper. So she's had an ability to be recognized, to be a character. And people say, th there's a familiarity that some people have by saying, I've seen her, I sort of know her, I don't agree with everything about her, but I know a little bit more about her than these other people who I don't know. And politics has taught voters in New York the, that you could always be surprised and, and not always in a good way. So w w with Anthony Weiner, who he, he cultivated this personality and this reputation of being this uh, liberal standard bearer, the guy who will go on Fox News and, and fight Republicans and, and really shout down reporters who, who, are, who he thought were unfair. Well, guess what? When he came back to New York, he wasn't always as left of center as everyone just assumed he was. For a while, he, he was talking about removing bicycle lanes uh, with, <laughs> with flourish. You know, he, um, he was noticeably absent in the debate about the, the quote-unquote mosque at Ground Zero, you know, um, which, which would have upset some people in his congressional district, which, which included parts of Queens and Brooklyn with a lot of Orthodox Jewish voters. Mm -hmm. So where is Wiener right now? Well, I mean, where does he, he go? To, and, and, I mean, just to pick up on that, he was, he was doing, I think, in those yeah. years when he was, you know, sort of a liberal during prime time on national TV, 
and for New York at least, a center to slightly conservative right. uh, uh, politician on, on almost uh, every local issue you could think of. That's what you're supposed to do in politics, right? I mean, this is coalition building. This is, you know, getting the Upper West Side to talk to the Rockaways and trying to sort of right. bridge some differences. And so, you know, we don't want to fault him for that. Uh, on the other hand, it's kind of hard to sort of make that case now that he's living on Park Avenue. Uh, and, and oh, well, the ad was, all, was all Brooklyn, and here he moved to Forest Hills, which isn't bad because I'm a Queens guy. But now he lives in Gramercy Park. Come on, yeah, give me a break. Yeah. Well, and he I mean, played stickball in Brooklyn streets in the 80s. Come on. <laughs> well, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, that wasn't his, his campaign ad, which is, that's, that's sort of a, you know, that's... I'm a stick player. I mean, that, I mean, code. that bothered that's me. That's code. For no. in Brooklyn, that's code. No, okay. I like Brooklyn. Oh, okay. You know? so, I get it. So, I get but, it. But, but, but um, he, he um, I think, is in a position now where he doesn't, he literally doesn't represent anybody right now. Right. Um, most of the big endorsements were chosen up before he even got into the race. Yeah. As far as the, the big party organizations, the major unions, the major political officials, as a yeah, matter of fact. And that. campaign right. talent. Right. So what does that leave him with? That leaves him with his strong suit, which is the media, which right. on one level, not to be flip about it, but we are his... His constituency at this point, or, or mm. we're, we are his main path to victory, is that he can get out a message through us, he can, he can campaign and debate with the best of them, and um, because we have this runoff situation uh, or possibility, yeah. he's thinking about it as any political professional would, one step at a time. Right. So yeah, he's not, he's not going to try and win over the whole city in the next, you know, uh, uh, right. 100 days. Right. Um, he doesn't have to. What he has to do is get into a runoff and stop anybody right. else from getting 40%. 40%. Which is a very different political proposition and one that is well within his reach. And, so, and, and, go ahead. And, and just the point about him not having a constituency, he, he basically has nothing to lose. So while most of the other candidates are going out and, and sort of currying favor with unions and with whoever is, is moderating or organizing this particular night's d debates, Anthony Weiner could show up and say things that most candidates aren't. He was one of the first candidates to say that retroactive pay raises are something that cannot be paid for unless uh, union members start paying into their own uh, in, into the cost to cover their own health care coverage. Which many of them do already, but let's go ahead. There, 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 there's a figure out there that I'd say about 90% do not. So, right. so Anthony Weiner says right. you, know, you have to start doing that, and the savings that we get from there can help pay for raises. Well, guess what? A few days after he started saying that, Christine Quinn started saying it. Now. This is something that he, 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 he apparently has a book of 64 uh, ideas that he says, this is the only thing I want to talk about. A lot of those ideas really aren't fleshed out. But the fact that he even starts saying things that some of the other candidates aren't doing because they're afraid of risking endorsements is altering what some of the candidates are doing. Yes, I think that's true. I mean, and look, of, of the 64 ideas and his keys to the city, um, several of them, I don't want to put a number on 2000. them, but, but several, well, no, not, not just, that, not just that they're, that they're, they're old, but they right. are not relevant to the race. You know, in, in some ways, it's almost reminiscent of uh, right. Koch talking right. about the death, death penalty. penalty, not within the mayor's power, not within the mayor's purview, uh, but, but it's kind of an identifier for something else. So when Anthony Weiner has this idea that we should have in New York City the equivalent of prime minister's question time in Britain, where the mayor goes and oh, argues yeah. with the city council once yeah. a week. Oh, yeah. A gr great idea. Right. I can't see a sitting mayor of New no. York taking no. even no. five minutes to do that. No. But, uh, so, so, so some of the ideas you can put aside. The, the ones that are, that are real, though, I think are interesting. They right. are intriguing. Right. It has forced some of the other candidates to maybe step up their game a little bit. Yep. And, you know, this is this actually, is good. this is good. This, this is, is a, a victory. This is a victory for the system. For, for, com for conversation. Okay. Top stories. We, we're, we're sort of at the end of the budget cycle in the city, sort of coming down. What, what are the two or three top stories uh, when you do your recap of what's happened so far? Well, the, the, one of the number one is the, uh, the teacher evaluation system and oh. the, the relationship between um, Tweed, meaning the Department of Education, right. and the, the teachers' union. We've had this thing imposed by the state because the two sides couldn't see to eye right. to eye. There's, um, there's on, the, on the, the city side, meaning the Department of Education, they want to protect their legacy. They want to secure their charter schools and make sure that some of their reforms go forward. On the union side, there's an issue of running out the clock, frankly, yep. waiting for the next mayor. Uh, we haven't seen who the UFT is going to endorse. They've said that they will endorse. And that, and that should be a big endorsement. It's going to be a big deal. Um, so I, I, and, and all of that is going to be tied up in the budget, you know, um, as we try and see, well, what are they going to do with the Department of Education budget? What lines are going to be in there for charter schools? How much of it is going to be baked in? And this is not just for the Department of Education, mm -hmm. but across the board. How much stuff is going to be baked in where they're paying forward for two or three years or otherwise trying to sort of lock in some changes? Keep your can. hands on the levers. Sure, sure. Now, the consensus seems to be that the next mayor can undo almost anything, but that's right. not going to stop 
this mayor and this administration from trying to have as serious of a long-lasting impact as they possibly can. That, those will be the things I'm looking at. Top story? Well, well, just to pick up on what er Errol said, at, at the end of any administration, there's always an effort to not only start something new, but to get it going so far that the next mayor has to really go out of their way to start undoing it. Sure. Bike lanes. <laughs> Bike yeah. lanes is one thing, but, but this is one of the things that, that, that Robert Moses had, had sort right. of taught people, that once you break ground and you get the city to start spending money, you really have to do something extraordinary to tell the public, well, all the money that we just spent to, to create that hole, well, we're just going to lose it and fill, fill it up. So if, if the mayor and city council speaker Quinn can get something going, put it in the budget, and have people see that it's producing results, then the, the next mayor is really going to be somewhat hamstrung to, to sort of live w w within that legacy. Right. And also uh, land use, East Midtown, I mean, the same thing. It's, the it seems to be totally legacy driven. Yeah, although, although he's, he's got a, um, the, the administration has to cope with um, uh, an open race for Manhattan Borough President. Right. And uh, a bunch of open seats on the east side in particular where they're, everyone is saying, every candidate is saying, slow down, we're not going to run on this, this timetable. Okay, let's go back to personalities. Ray Kelly, all, all constant buzz. There's a very, um, there's been a very pronounced point of view right from the beginning of this right. campaign that the, um, and I'll quote Joe Loda, but he by no means is the only one saying this, is that the gains of the Bloomberg administration when it comes to public safety are fragile, that we could right. easily roll backwards. And I personally don't think we could go back to 1992 or well, 1993 very easily, but that's what is put out there. It's like, you know, we're only, a, we're only you know, one bad decision away from turning into Detroit. Right, and and, and some of that is- That's but, the case for Ray Kelly. Right. right, but some of that is just a little bit of hyperbole. The, the, the Bloomberg administration sort of needs to say this in order to sort of scare the candidates out of taking some of their positions, including creating an inspector general for the NYPD, uh, curbing stop and frisk. If you ask people like uh, sociologist Frank Zimmerig, who Ray Kelly likes to quote, he's a guy who wrote, I believe, two books about the, the mm -hmm. NYPD and the historical crime drop. Uh, I asked him, can New York City ever go back to those previous crime rates? He says it's, it's nearly impossible. That's, it's not something that's going to happen. New York City has sort of changed in too many ways, and, and there would be, you would need too many things to happen for, for that to even be possible. You ask uh, Charles Hines, the, the Brooklyn DA, uh, who's running for re-election, re can New York City sort of go back to the crime rate of the 1990s when he first got elected into office? He, he says it's not possible. He's also in a position to, to sort of want to... Uh, defend the role of uh, d district attorneys in, right. in, in keeping New York City safe. But, but the idea of Ray Kelly as a mayoral candidate, this is something that the Bloomberg administration ha has always toyed with. But once Christine Quinn uh, embraced the idea of reducing uh, stop and frisk, but also saying that it's not linked to the reduction in crime rates, that was a key turning point in her relationship, I think, with, with the Bloomberg establishment and the Ray Kelly establishment. She also took this uh, quasi middle of the road path by saying she won't support the creation of inspector general office, but she'll let it go through the city council where it's guaranteed to pass. So she gets the ability to, to, to look like she's allowing democracy to happen while not embracing something that, that, that's really going to anger city hall. Well, that, that wasn't good enough. And Bloomberg's response was to say, all of you candidates, including the New York Times, you are contributing to something that could lead to more deaths in New York City. Then there was a poll, uh, by Ke Kellyanne Conway, a, a Republican pollster, mm -hmm. who floated the idea of Ray Kelly as a mayoral candidate. And, and you, you start seeing uh, people who like the idea of somebody who fits that role, who's, who's the next closest thing to a, to a Michael Bloomberg uh, public agenda, uh, uh, pu public safety agenda candidate uh, entering the race. My, my, my sense of it, honestly, is that, you know, and I say this partly just as somebody who lives in Brooklyn North, in one of the high crime mm -hmm. areas where we have seen dramatic changes over the last decade. Not enough changes, but we've seen some changes. I think the people who um, are doing some of the scaremongering don't really understand where the violence is coming from or, or the dynamics that are involved. Because, you, you know, you, it's possible to say, yeah, we could do better. It's possible to say, you know, this or that tactic needs to be kept or modified or, or, or scrapped. But to me, it's not possible rationally, if you understand what goes on in these neighborhoods, to say we could go all the way back to 1992. That's just that's just not going to happen. But Ray, Ke I mean, Ray, Ray has said that it's not in his DNA. And just looking at Kelly and his career, he, he wants to deal with the city council. He, he is, wants he, to go to rub a chicken dinner and backslap. No, not, not a chance. Okay. He, he is. Okay. He is the head of a nation state called the NYPD. Right. They've right. got submarines. International, right? Submarines and planes and scuba divers and lawyers. Spies and, all over the he, place. He's I mean, got all on. kinds of stuff okay. going on. Why okay. would you step down and become mayor? Okay. Right. It's a step <laughs> right. down. 
Okay. We recently had this an environmental racism brouhaha between right. uh, Bill Thompson and Chris Quinn. There's, there's, there's a larger question that, that, that struck me, and that Bill Thompson's reaction was, as a black man, he found it offensive. I mean, the bottom line is, can a black man be racist? I, I, I actually think... They... I'm, I'm, why am I looking at the black man? Let me do the thing out. <laughs> Don't I will... be a racist. That's right. Don't be a racist. Why am I looking at Errol? Ozzy. Now, I, I will leave that, that part of alone, but, but the debate about the, the East Side Transfer Station, um, d d there's two questions. Was the, use of, was the use of the phrase environmental racism in fact itself racist? And secondly, should, should that plant be built? The first part of that question is, is a really interesting one. Christine Quinn and other people have said um, there, there's a problem with environmental racism citing these kind of plants and garbage facilities in black and brown neighborhoods that are, that are poor. It's unfair, it should be stopped, and, and neighborhoods that are better off that haven't had the, these problems should shoulder their burden and take them. Now, Bill Thompson, very curiously, had said Christine Quinn called him an environmental racist, mm -hmm. which he then said is different than, being, than, than saying that you support pro, uh, policies that are, that are environmentally racism. He made, a distinct, uh, he made a distinction between those two phrases. I haven't seen any evidence that, that Christine Quinn actually used the phrase environmental racist. Still, what that, that moment was sort of interesting. It was the first time that I can remember Bill Thompson sort of aggressively reminding, um, re reminding the public about this racial element in the race that, that so far has not come to the foreground. Now, whether or not she said the phrase or did not say the phrase, we all got a reminder that, that Bill Thompson is African-American, is black, and that a lot of people, him, himself included, can be, uh, can be offended by what some of the other candidates said. Mm. Yeah, I mean, th this was, on, on some level, in pure, purely political terms, this is a bit of a trap that Christine Quinn might have walked into. Um, you know, she is actually on the side of the angels when it comes to right. getting noxious uses out of communities Poor of neighbor, color right. and make sure that everybody handles right. their own fair right. share. Uh, on the other hand, the use of that phrase enables Bill Thompson to jump right. out and say, oh, by the way, I'm the black candidate. And, and it, that's not a small thing. I mean, um, the polls show right now, the same poll that shows Christine Quinn in the lead, if you look at the cross tabs, right. it yep. shows her getting more black votes than Thompson. Yep. Which, which I think we all know is probably and, not going to happen right, on election day. Right. And, and, and something similar happened with Obama. Once, you know, the black vote consolidates late, I think is the way yep. the, the, the strategists yep. put yep. it. Yep. Right. What that means is once people figure out that you're a black candidate, the black vote will largely go to you. And um, that is probably what's going to happen. So anytime Thompson can get up and say, if you're talking about race and I'm in it, I'm going to jump up and say I'm the black candidate, that essentially. So there's that. On the substance, Go ahead. it's an important issue. And, and by the way, you know, the folks on the east side who are saying, don't put this thing here, they're saying don't reopen and expand a transfer station that was there from 1940 to 1999. Yep. So it was there for 59 years, and now they're trying to reopen it. This isn't like they're trying to create some horrible thing and just dump it in this community. And their answer in part is, hey, let's stick with the status quo and just send it over to the Essex uh, incinerator over by Newark, or let's send it up to the Bronx and take it out by rail. Yep. And in either case, once you pull back your focus to beyond just uh, this one narrow corner of, of Manhattan, shipping it by truck to Newark, where there are a lot of people of color, and there's an incinerator that's going to burn it and dump the soot all over those people, this is not exactly um, and you're a sensitive way to you know to noxious gases right, yeah. and materials throughout the city. Right. The, 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 the citing question on the east side, it is across the street from a number of public housing uh, projects, but the alternative is to truck it, which, which is not environmentally sound by any, by any means. But also, if you ask Bill Thompson, what's the alternative? He doesn't have one. He literally says that, that he does not have a specific site where he would like this uh, to be put. To, uh, to, to be placed, but his answer is, let's review, the, let, let's review Bloomberg's entire citywide program. And it, it, so you can, it's very easy during a campaign to say no to one site and also not point a finger to the, to the neighborhood where you'd like to see it. That's open. your guy's job, to well, keep and, people's and, and feet to the floor. We all need to do a little research because he was controller when this whole thing was passed. Yes. I mean, it's not like, yep. It's yep. Not yep. like yep. this yep. Yep. Just fell out of the sky. Okay. We're going to have an election in September, maybe under the auspices of what is recognized as a totally incompetent board of elections. What, I mean, is it possible that we, we have an, a primary and then we don't have a runoff because the machines don't work? I mean, what are we, what are we talking about? I don't here? think that's gonna happen. I think there's gonna be, if there's gonna be a runoff, New York will handle it. 
I mean, we'll have to, we'll bring back the levity. There are shit. pieces, there are pieces of the law and of common sense that are going to be violated. Okay. I think we all understand. Okay. That. Yes. Okay. Right. So nicely put. Yeah. So, so I, I don't think that um, we're going to violate them in a way that we can't figure out who wins the runoff. So I think there's going to be an election. There will probably be litigation from um, disabled people's organizations mm -hmm. and others who don't like the idea of uh, uh, deviating from, you know, because you know who won't be able to vote in, in, in a runoff? It's not just that there'll be people with disabilities who have a hard time using the old machines, although that is a problem. Uh, there'll be a bunch of people overseas right. who are serving yep. you know, overseas. Yep. They are not going to yep. get to cast a vote. Ooh. That's not cool. That's not okay. That's illegal under federal law, but it's not a federal election, so they could probably get away with it. I think that's probably what's going to happen. We only have a minute left. I mean, time flew. Mike Bloomberg, legacy. I've always said that the solid waste plan, that's the subject right. of this big fight, is an important part of his legacy. That plus education and the drop in, in, uh, in crime, plus the general data-driven style of the, of the agencies. I mean, that's to me, is the short, early take on his legacy. There'll be some other Successful mayor. Oh, for sure. Okay. By his own terms? Absolutely. Okay. Good manager, uh, easing of racial tensions. I remember when he shook hands with Al Sharpton after he was first elected. That was front page news. And now Al Sharpton being at a political event is, is, is almost a given. Uh, New York City has changed uh, te technologically speaking, crime-wise. Education, not as much as people would like. Uh, th that's, I think, still somewhat of an open question. But, but, but the city has changed in ways that, that, that is hard to remember from, from when it were, uh, from when it was governed by Rudy And, and a re reduction in the importance of party politics. I mean, he, he, he really pushed it to the side in a way that we hadn't seen before. Okay. You know. One final sort of yes, no. Stature gap between Mike Bloomberg and all the mayoral candidates, Republicans and Democrats? I would say uh, yes, but probably. You're smiling. I say yes, but not as great as he thinks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we have the spate of stories where he's going around trying to recruit Hillary Clinton and all these other people as if only a select handful of maybe a half dozen people in the world could run New York like City. Like Kathy Black, for example. Right, right. <laughs> Ozzy. Uh, yes, but it's only true until the next mayor is anointed yeah. or, or sworn in. Thanks. Excellent. Excellent. My thanks to guest Errol Lewis and Ozzy Pybera for being on the show. Join us next week on City Talk here on CUNY TV. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it. <laughs>